Good morning and welcome to virtual worship with Welsher Presbyterian Church in Denver, Colorado. Today is October the 11th, 2020, and we are glad that you've joined us in worship this morning. This is the busy part of the fall. We have the Children's Sabbath next Sunday, Reformation Sunday coming up, and All Saints Day. And we do hope that you'll follow us as we move through this very exciting time of the year. You may have read a congregational email that came out last week about a session decision saying that Welsher is a Matthew 25 church. This is an initiative of our whole Presbyterian denomination um, declaring that we are for the least among us. From Matthew 25 when Jesus said, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. You will have opportunities for study, um, for Bible study of that very important chapter coming up in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for information and ways to sign up for those opportunities. Let us be called now to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God. Rejoice, the Lord is king. God for hope in his name. Glorious God, we come before you as a hurting and humbled people. We bow before you today in need of hope. At times we feel helpless. At times we feel weak. Thus we ask for your hope. We need hope for a better future. We need hope for better lives. We need hope for love and kindness. We need resurrection hope. The sky is darkest just before the light. We need a new dawn, Lord. We need to bask in your glory. We need to know that all is right and just in the world. 
as you want it to be. Help us to walk in your light and live our lives in faith and truth. In your name we pray. Amen. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not even seen. So we walk in faith and not by sight. Let us have hope in God. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning comes to us from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23. Hear now. These are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God is like the light of morning. Like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? And the second reading from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars seize to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. When I was in middle school, I picked a fight with a bully. I didn't like this boy because he said lots of unkind things and pushed people around. And one day I'd had enough and I started a food fight with him. Now, you all are a lot smarter than me, so I don't have to tell you because you already understand this much better than I did as a kid. But starting fights is a bad idea and does not solve problems. And I got in a lot of trouble for starting the fight and suspended from school. As I grew up and learned more about Jesus, do you know that Jesus started fights too? Now Jesus' fights were different than the kind of fight I had. Jesus' fights were against the type of things that hurt people. Jesus fought for love, joy, peace, and fairness. Jesus see, could see God in all people, so he fought for them. And as followers of Christ, we are to do the same. We have lots of fighters at Welshire. I have a friend, Karen. You might know her because of the funny hats that she wears. She fights against hunger. She and a team of fighters called the Hunger Task Force give food to people who don't have enough. I have a friend, Marty, who fights for all children to get a good education, and she works with volunteers to fight for the children of Schmidt Elementary School. And I have a friend, Mary Margaret, who fights against racial injustice and systems that don't treat people fairly. These are the kind of fights that Jesus wants his friends to take on. Jesus knew some sad things would happen in the world. He told his friends over and over again that even when sad things happen, they shouldn't be afraid. He let them know that he was bigger than any of these scary things and that he would always be with them and put peace in their hearts. Your grown-ups will tell you not to get into fights, and they are right. You were not made to get into fights to hurt other people. But there are other kinds of fights that we are supposed to get in. Fights for the hungry, the stranger, the prisoner. Fights for love. You'll know these fights when you see them. When a kid in class is being picked on or when you notice someone who doesn't have any friends, you get to pick a fight against loneliness and the hurt that they are feeling. Every time you pick the right kind of fight, the world will know a little bit more about Jesus. Let's close in prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for fighting for joy and fairness. Thank you for fighting for love and peace. Help us to do the same. We love you. Amen. God bless you all and have great weeks.
looking at stories of hope this fall. And this reading from the epistle to the Philippians is one of the most positive and hopeful passages in the New Testament. Listen for the word of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear is in the news. We've talked about fear a couple of times during the pandemic, but it seems to keep surging back. I did a little research this week, and apparently uh, the top few fears in America in general Fear of heights coming in at 28.2% of the population. A fear of reptiles, crocodiles, snakes, lizards. 23.6% of the population are afraid of those things. Public speaking comes in at 25%. Deep lakes and oceans at 18.2%. And then oddly, I found... 6.7% of the population in America are afraid of clowns. I personally am afraid of oceans and in particular sharks in the ocean. I have an app on my phone which tells me where the latest shark attacks are in the United States. Fear left unchecked can dominate us, can paralyze us, and it can be extraordinarily destructive. There are some positive things about fear, which we'll come to momentarily. In 1819, the whale ship, the Essex, took off from Nantucket. Eventually, on its uh, pilgrimage, it was hit by a sperm whale, And the ship sank. The men on the ship, the 20 sailors, climbed into three small whaling boats. And they were going to shore, but they were afraid of the closest islands because they had heard rumors of cannibalism. And so they decided to take the long way to find shore. They did not find shore, and eventually they started to die, and eventually... um, because they had no food and no water, they cannibalized themselves. The very thing that they were afraid of ended up doing them in, ironically. Calvin, John Calvin, said the mind is a permanent factory of fear. And I've always liked that phrase. Luke Powery, who's the chaplain at the, um, at the Duke Chapel says when fear destroys a life and its purpose and potential, then fear becomes a tragedy. He, in a sermon, refers to the parable of the talents in which two servants double their talents. One makes Uh, 10 out of 5, and one makes 4 out of 2. But the third servant buried his treasure and returned that one talent 
to the master because he said he was afraid. He was afraid. Powery says he should have buried his fear and not his treasure. Fear can be a destructive tool, but it can be constructive as well. Fear can be a good thing. Touching, being afraid of touching fire is a wise thing. Being afraid of walking across the interstate while cars are speeding by can be a good thing. Fear of opening an aircraft door at 30,000 feet can be obviously a great thing. There's a book called The Gift of Fear, which talks about the importance of listening to our instincts, and that becomes important. In fact, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Obviously, that's not being terrified of God, but that's having a certain amount of respect for God, a reverence for God, a, an awe in God's presence. That's obviously a good use of fear. Matthew 25, we're talking a lot about being a Matthew 25 congregation this fall. But even Matthew 25 tries to motivate us with fear at the last judgment when the sheep are separated from the goats and the sheep go into paradise, but the goats uh, go into um, eternal difficulties in a bad place. You don't want to be the goat, is the moral of the passage. Trump said this past week, don't fear COVID. And what I hope he meant was don't let COVID paralyze you. Don't let COVID ruin your life. And I would agree with that. But I think it is important to respect the virus, to pay attention to the virus, to treat it uh, with some kind of respect and to use measures which prohibit it from spreading, like wearing masks. But there is an alternative to having our mind filled with the permanent factory of fear. Thus, our text this morning. We're looking at uh, stories of hope, and we're focusing on becoming a community of hope. And I chose Philippians 4 this morning. It's a reading we often use at funerals and memorial services because it is the final words of Paul, perhaps the final words of Paul. Paul had different kinds of relationships with all of the churches that he writes epistles to that are recorded in the New Testament canon. But with Philippi, the churches in Philippi, and I say churches plural because they were little house churches becoming one church. With the churches in Philippi, Paul had an absolute um, love story. It was probably the only church with whom he accepted gifts, accepted financial remuneration for his work as a sign that he actually trusted them and love them. And this epistle to the Philippians is a thank you letter for a gift, noting their assistance to him. It probably, it's not clear, probably was written from Rome, probably from a jail cell, and probably as his execution neared. It is, a dire it is a dire setting regardless of exactly where it is. It's obvious his life is coming to a close. And so in this letter to the Philippians, a thank you letter, he writes his final exhortation. He says, finally, beloved. And this is not suggesting the letter is coming to a close, but that perhaps his life is nearing its end. Finally, beloved, it's not an epistle filled with fear. He says, finally, beloved, rejoice always. And again, I say, rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and it does, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then he gives this advice. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Wow. Hardly the last words in testament of a man who is filled with fear. Commentary suggests that this list of things, honorable and just and pure and pleasing, commendable, is not specifically something that came from Paul, but that the Greeks used these virtues in many of their writings. Paul was borrowing this from secular wisdom, perhaps, suggesting that you fill your mind with these positive attributes, perhaps a bit like mindfulness today. Many people suggest that In this time of difficulty, in this time of darkness, during the global pandemic, when we're struggling um, with racial reconciliation and economic despair, that we need to flood our minds with things like gratitude, things that we are thankful for. Many suggest that it's important now more than ever to keep a gratitude journal or remember in your prayers five things that you're grateful for that happened during the day. Norman Vincent Peale wrote a book a few, many years ago now called The Power of Positive Thinking. And I've read that book numerous times during my ministry and it is a flawed piece of uh, uh, research to a degree, but the main principle is absolutely intact. It's imperative that we keep our minds on positive things, that we focus on whatever's commendable and just and good and right so that we're not overwhelmed with the things that frighten us that go bump in the night. Fred Bigner, the Presbyterian minister um, turned writer who we quote too often suggests that Christianity might be summed up as mainly uh, wishful thinking, wishful thinking things that we hope for, things that we haven't even seen, and that somehow this wishful thinking motivates us and empowers us to be faithful in our time. It's also possible that when we're um, confronted with fear that we want to uh, run away from our problems, some say that You know, when we're confronted with fear, we fight or we take flight. But taking flight does not always work either. One of my favorite little um, meditation guides was written by a fellow named Dr. John Kabat-Zinn. The book is entitled, Wherever You Go, There You Are. Wherever you go, there you are. And the main theme throughout those little meditation practices is that um, whereas it might be tempting to run away from our problems, and sometimes it is important to run away from our problems, the one person you can never run away from is yourself, that wherever you go, there you will be. So it's important that we focus our mind on whatever is commendable and just and pleasing in God's sight, and not allow our minds to become a permanent factory of fear. John Kabat-Zinn says we cannot stop the waves, but we can learn to surf. We cannot stop the waves, but we can learn to surf. In other words, the, the waves that come over us, 
global pandemic, all the things that we're facing right now, it's difficult for us as individuals to stop those, but we can learn to rise above it with the help of God, with the help of Jesus Christ, in faith, dwelling on the positive things which God has done for us and continues to promise to do in the future. So don't allow your mind to become a permanent factory of fear during this time. Respect your fear, listen to the fear, but train your mind on those things which Paul suggests. We fill our minds, finally, beloved, whatever is commendable and just and pleasing in God's sight are the things that we need to cling to during this desperate time. May it be so with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning, Welcher. I am Brian Bishop, and this is Mary Margaret Bishop, and we're here to talk about hope. Uh, To be honest with you, when we were presented with this topic, we found it to be a bit challenging. Uh, There's lots of change going on in the world and in our lives personally, Uh, lots of fear, lots of uncertainty and doubt, and it was hard to um, tackle this topic. But when we took a step back, lots of things came to mind. Uh, For example, for our family personally, uh, our dog was in decline and ultimately passed away during the pandemic. And we felt truly privileged and blessed to be able to be with him and spend the time with him um, and really cherish him and and attend to his needs. Um, and, And we would not have been able to do that Uh, had we been jumping in our cars and rushing off to work and school and going through our daily grind uh, for multiple hours out of the day. So um, that was our kind of our family's perspective and I'll let Mary Margaret share some more. So Brian and I definitely have struggled to to find the silver lining during this time, but I, I think to echo what he said, um, this change of pace has enabled us to connect with our neighbors more. We don't just come home and close the garage. Um, We're here and we can, um, from a social distance, be able to actually get to know our neighbors more. And that has truly been a blessing. I think we've also um, recognized that this change of pace has brought an awareness to us um, and to others um, of another pandemic that has been in our country for over 400 years. and, And that's the pandemic of racism. Brian and I have embarked upon our own journey of learning and relearning um, information that we knew about this topic and how we ourselves have uphold racism, uh, continue to uphold racism in our day-to-day lives. Um, but there is, we've seen hope in this opportunity too of learning. Um, we haven't been the only ones to engage in the conversation. We've engaged in this conversation with our white neighbors. Um, We've seen topics come up in our workplace around really examining policies and practices. Um, Even at Welshire Presbyterian, there is an anti-racism task force that is really committed to um, learning what we can do to dismantle racism and look at our own institution and how we've upheld this. So I see hope. Uh, I believe God is working in us and through us um, and working on us um, and challenging us to really work together as Christians for a more just and equitable society. Thank you for this opportunity to provide a message of hope. Thank you. Thank you.
and the life of the world. O oh God, our refuge and strength, in whom we live and move and have our very being, in the stillness we rejoice in you, we know your presence, and we dream of the river whose streams make glad the city of God. Lord of hosts, the nations are in an uproar, always, it seems. And so we pray for your peace, that you would break the bow and shatter the spear, bring reconciliation where there is conflict, repentance where there has been wrong, restoration where there has been brokenness. Our hope is in you. And our hope, we hope, would stir us into action. We seek to be part of that city of peace, O oh God, to follow in the ways of Jesus that your kingdom would be built, to do the things that we have learned and received and heard and seen in him. And so, Whatever is true, when truth is hard to find, give us discerning minds that seek the truth not just for ourselves, but the truth from the perspective of those in greatest need. Whatever is honorable, when respect seems in scarce supply, let our treatment of all your children be thoughtful, kind, and honoring of difference. Whatever is just, O oh God, let us understand justice. Justice that seeks abundant living for all and says there is enough if it is shared. Justice that has a vision far beyond the clamor, that heals the hurting, gives voice to the voiceless, and shares power with the powerless. Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, kind, and loving, and generous, O oh God of peace, be with us and hear us as we pray in the way of Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Loved, forgiven, freed, and hopeful, we have the opportunity to give of ourselves, to share in supporting the work of the church and the giving of the church in support of our entire community. We thank you for your gifts to Welsher, which can be made um, through the website in the links provided, as well as just by simply mailing a check to the church. There are those who are able to pick that mail up daily. Let us now give our tithes and offerings.
This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country God, you have so greatly loved us, so long sought us, and so mercifully redeemed us. Give us grace that we might give our gifts, our wills, and our works as a continual act of thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I keep from 
to God's world with peace. Love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide in your hearts this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.